Hey, we're ready to read chapter eight of the Panda Puzzle. And the kids are heading back to the fitness center um, because they got some free passes. So they're gonna snoop around um, to see if they can find any more clues. The kids met in front of the fitness center about an hour later. They were carrying their bathing suits and towels. Flip and Kate were behind the counter. The gym was crowded and the music was still blasting. Back again, Flip asked. Dink laid the three passes on the counter. We came for a swim, he said. Great idea, said Kate. Come on, I'll show you where you guys can change. She led the kids toward the pool. There were a lot of other kids splashing around. A few grown-ups sat on the side watching. The lifeguard prowled around the pool, keeping a sharp eye on the swimmers. Kate stopped in front of a row of four doors. Two of them were labeled men and women, but the two doors in the middle were unmarked. Here are the changing rooms, Kate said. No diving, no running, and listen for the lifeguard's whistle. If he blows it once, everyone freeze. Then he'll blow it again twice. That means kids get out for 15 minutes and then the adults can swim. Have a good time. See you in three minutes, Ruth Rose said and she disappeared into the girls' changing room. Dink and Josh went into theirs and found themselves alone. Blue metal lockers lined the four walls. At the far end were showers, sinks, toilets, and a floor-to-ceiling mirror. The floor was carpeted, and there were benches to sit on. Dink walked over to a small closet with storage written on the door. He peeked inside. Do you see any pandas? Josh whispered. Dink glanced at Josh in the mirror. No, but I see a skinny red-headed monkey. You are so getting dunked when I get you in the pool, Josh said. The boys changed, dashed their clothes into two lockers, and headed for the pool. The lifeguard stopped them. Hi, guys. I'm sure Kate explained the rules, right? You've got about ten minutes before adults went. Have fun. He was trying to snoop around in the locker room. Thanks, we will, Dink said. Ruth Rose came out wearing a lime green bathing suit. The kids jumped into the water at the shallow end. Now what? Josh asked, glancing toward Flip behind the counter. I wonder what's behind those two other doors we saw. One might lead us to a bowling alley, Josh said. I think it's right below us. Maybe we can check them out during the adult swim time, Ruth Rose said. When the whistle blows, make sure you climb out on that side. While they waited, the kids swam and splashed each other. Josh tried standing on his head underwater. He came up coughing. Suddenly, the whistle blew. Everyone in the pool turned and faced the lifeguard. Adult swim, he yelled and blew the whistle twice more. There was a wet stampede as the kids got out of the water. At the same time, the adults tried to climb into the pool. Most of the confusion was right in front of the changing rooms. No one noticed as Ruth Rude tried the handles on the other doors. One was locked, but the other one was opened. Come on, Ruth Rose whispered as she slipped through. Dink and Josh were right behind her. When Dink pulled the door closed, it was pitch black. Where are we? Josh asked, shivering. All three kids were dripping pool water. Dink put his, put his arms out and touched smooth walls on each side. He inched one bare foot forward and felt the edge of a wooden step. I think we might be at the top of a scare staircase, he whispered. Let's try to find a light, Josh said. I hate the dark. Not yet, Ruth Rose said. Let's feel our way down to see if there's a light at the bottom. Watch out for slivers, Dink said. The kids made their way down the dark stairs. They reached a hard, cold floor and stopped. Okay, I'm not going any further without a light, Josh said. I feel like one of those blind fish that live in a cave. They felt around on the walls. Got it, Ruth Rose said, and click, the lights came on. 
The kids were standing at one end of the corridor. The floor was smooth stone. The bottom half of the walls was rougher stone with newer looking painted boards on the top. The ceiling was a mess of ancient wooden beams, rusty pipes, and spider webs. Check this out, Dink said. Scratched into the motor between two stones was a date, 1902. This wall was built a hundred years ago. And it's still creepy, Josh said. These stones are cold. The narrow corridor was filled with broken gym equipment, rolled up floor mats, a large paint, and large paint containers. A row of cardboard boxes lined the right-hand wall. There were no other doors in the corridor. What's that noise? Ruth Rose said. It sounds like thunder. Dink leaned his head against the wall on his left. I think it's the bowling alleys on the other side, he said. The kids began walking along the hallway. Let's look in every box we see, Ruth Rose said. Winnie's small, so she could be hidden anywhere. Five minutes later, they'd run out of boxes. Most had been empty, but a few held white packing peanuts. The kids stood at the end of the corridor and thought about what to do next. A floor mat had been left there. The kids flopped it down. Josh rubbed his bare feet and shivered. It's weird that they'd have this long hall with no doors, Tink said. Maybe it was an old basement before the fitness center got built. Ruth Rose said. Ouch, Josh said. What? Tink asked. I don't know, but it hurts. Josh got up and poked the mat where he had been sitting. Help me lift this thing, he said. There's something under it. The kids got up and helped Josh lift the mat. Hidden underneath was the metal handle of a trap door. <gasps> Look at that. They found a trap door. Okay, I can't wait to read what happens in chapter nine. Stay tuned, you guys.